can track as a astute how actually knowledgeable the doctor is at the actual doctor. He's an actual doctor. Yeah. Yeah, Trikus is having doubts. Uh, are you gonna try to read his mind? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> uh, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna, like, probe into his mind, and you get that he is, uh, like, like, he's a doctor. He knows what he's talking about. Like, like, he sort of told Abraham. Abraham? Yeah. Like he told him, he he has have an interest in, in basically studying the Zerg uh, evolution and how Varsar's unique position kind of affecting it. He's also interested in studying the effects that the Protoss purification has had on uh, the planet. Um, certain like minerals that have been exposed to the uh, purification process kind of have uh, um, very unique properties that kind of. In a way, competing with a lot of other interests to um, to study, and um, you can also read that he is a part of. And then, before you get any deeper than that, he kind of looks dead at you, and then just feel like it is uh, like you've been cut off, cut out, and he looks like right at Trichus. And then he turns to Abraham and back to Trichus and back to Abraham one last time. With the towel that he had in his hand, he starts like uh, wiping his one really like bloody arm off, and then he just says, "And then he just says, uh, you Dominion.'" No. No, I am not. So then he just looks at uh, Trichus. Mm, for a minute. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna need to get some uh, special equipment to uh, work on you. It looks like. I'll be right back out. And he sort of heads into the building, uh, into like a, a ba back room for a second. Uh, Abraham's hands kind of like dip into his coat as he like kind of nonchalantly crosses his arms. Your dog, that fit. He, he's gonna like say to uh, Kennedy, What is his business with the Dominion? So, uh, quick question. I'm you getting confused know. on what. I, which, on. Um, yes, I have played StarCraft, so I don't no, know. No, you also. Which one's... I mean, huh? The Dominion is the main. Uh, yeah. Uh, hold on. That's a major lore major question lore. counter. Lore question number we, three. We've hit one for this session. <laughs> uh, yes. We did it, boys. We started. So it begins. Yes. So, major lore question counter. We're at one. The Dominion is sort of the main Terran faction. Uh, essentially, they're like the big player in the group, right? Um, uh, essentially, they're they're there's they're the the largest and most powerful Terran faction. There's two minor ones. Uh, there's the Umojin Protectorate, which Abraham is a part of, and then there's the Kelmorian Combine. Yeah, Masara is technically Dominion. Technically, technically. Okay. Okay, in that case, if since they're the biggest one, I kind of look over at Abraham, I'm like, well, well, who is it? The minions are, like the biggest group, aren't they? Yeah, I guess you can. Uh, if he says that, track is just gonna look at. Um, we weren't asking you about a, a history lesson about the Dominion. I'm um, not asking you about the involvement of your. Zerg chopping friends. Hey man, he has a doctor. I think he had to call him a doctor illegally. But yeah, uh, I mean, who, I mean, I'm probably just passing news. I mean, people talk about the Dominion like, all the time here. It just seems like news. Mm. I don't like him. I. 
I, I, I just kind of stops talking after kind of saying that, but lets his hands like relax back to his sides. A few moments later, uh, Doc Mastiff comes out and he uh, has a um like a device attached to his head. Uh, Trikus. Trikus. Um, you recognize that device because you've seen it many times already while you were in the Ghost Academy because uh, you, you recognize it to be a size screen. It's essentially like a, a, a head mounted device that what you can put on it kind of maybe looks like a, a headset almost and then like a, it has a little like a sort of earbud almost type thing that wires into uh, uh, that he has like placed in his ear and essentially um, your your natural ability to read minds has now been like uh, like uh, you know you, like you can feel Lechen, you can feel uh, Ken, you can feel Joby, and then there's just like a blank spot where Doc Mastiff is standing now, and he uh, basically kind of looks like he's like, all right, let's get this over with. Come on over here. Mm, truck is just gonna smart. Interesting piece of gear. I wouldn't call it so much. I wouldn't say interesting so much as useful. Kind of like at that point, like, see, he's a doctor. He has procedure related <laughs> things. I would say, like mm. the other three of you guys, you can roll a science check to see if you recognize what kind of piece of gear it is. I'm just saying, Trike is can recognize it instantly because uh, he's a ghost. <laughs> 20. Okay. Yep. Kennedy Kennedy knows what a size screen is. Do I immediately know he's a ghost now? You well, you don't immediately know someone's a ghost, but like you know, you, you know why someone would be wearing a size screen. Okay, Joby also knows that it's a size screen. Knows uh <laughs> well, yeah. do. And Abraham, of course, knows that We're it's a size screen. This game is like really yeah. easy to roll high. What is, I, 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 I'm, I'm scared. I'm very scared. Oh my god. Please, so, if, we're, if we're rolling high, that means Nick's gonna roll. And that means if we have to fight somebody, we're gonna die. It does. Yeah. Oh no. Seth is gonna look at the doctor and say, Well, seems like you have an interesting relation with Dominion. Uh, any problem? I don't see how that's any of your business. Well, considering you're about to play with my vital organ, I rather not someone that have a vendetta just kill me for no good reason. Abraham will like hold up a hand. I would make, I will make sure that he doesn't mess with anything we need to keep breathing. We will have this conversation perhaps after the surgeon. That is just gonna look at Abraham and just say. You know how I hate people messing around with my body. Abraham nods. I will make sure this does not become a habit. Yeah, okay. Time. Uh, you know what it is. Yeah. Uh, he will just pretty much uh, take a look over your uh, wounds and then just uh, start like pull out some tools and start like you know stitching here uh, like digging the, to, to check and, 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 and put things back in place around your vital organs around your arm and it doesn't take uh, too long and, and you basically you're back together it maybe takes like a, a little under an hour for him to uh, pretty much get you to a point, maybe not where you're like going to be like like where the wounds are, are gone, but to a point where like after a good night's sleep, you'll be pretty uh set. He's gonna be like, all right, that's gonna be uh probably I'd say a hundred credits, all things considered. I guess he's gonna look to Abraham. <laughs> Just say, if I mean, settle it, should I settle it personally? Uh, I do not have. 
Don't look at me, I only got 75. Hey, and everyone collectively I looks at Joby, who no one has talked to really at all yet. I was that uh, I was trying to be like, man, I was gonna say like, ask if they had a pilot, but I think that's a little too on the nose. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna be y'all need, y'all need a small load or something? What, what are y'all staring at me for? You have a hey, job Abraham. you could do. Abraham like nods, like fair trade. What is the job you need here for? Ever since the Protoss purified the surface of the planet, the mineral deposits have been rather interesting, to say the least. I just, uh, unfortunately, the Kelmorians have set up a little base outside of town, and they're instituting something of a monopoly on local mining operations. If you can sneak under their noses and get me a, a good size chunk of uh, purified minerals to study, we'll call it even. Uh, archaeology dig? No, Tracker is just gonna say, no need. No need. <laughs> <laughs> well, offer's still on the table if you want to do it. I'd say, uh. Okay. I kind of lean in and like, so it's just kind of it was one of those archaeology things that I do. Okay, no. looting. No. Yeah, sir. no, this isn't no, what I mean. If sneaking around like a rat and taking other people's things is your definition of archaeology, then yes, it would be. Hey man, it, I, I'm a classy dude. I like to talk about classy things. Kennedy got uh, everything under the sun. Uh, hey, those 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 old colonies have some pretty good archaeology. Dude, that's a sick. You want us to sneak into an establishment, steal a bunch of rope, come back, and you want to pay us one hundred credit? Yeah, that's the long and the short of it. Sorry, I had to tell you out loud. I'm sure you're not used to that kind. Uh, no, I still think you are undervaluing the risk we are taking for 100 credit. Hmm. Well, everyone agree. I hate those guys. They said they'd shoot me out of the sky if I ever got my plane fixed. Abraham raises his hand. Yes. Given, given that our debt to you is fairly settled. I propose a different offer. Payments for the job, I would like to take a sample of these minerals with myself. I have a passing curiosity in such business. Well then, instead of credits, anything you bring back will split. Uh, well, yeah, that's fair. Uh, for half credits, we'll split the rock 80-20. Surely, you don't need the whole 80% of what we bring back. Granted, it might depend on the size of the sample. 70-30. I'm not a negotiator. No, but I am and we are the ones doing the legwork for you. We'll just repeat, it's like, uh, work, I, I'm not interested. In, in arguing oh. this whole thing out, you've heard my terms. If you want to abide by them, and otherwise, if you have no other business, get out. It might be kind of nods. Perhaps you would speak on this later then. But consider your terms accepted for the time being. <laughs> and uh, just kind I kind of. Gotta... Mm -hmm. Kind of look at both of you guys like, you guys got the credits of paying for the ship, right? Like, I can't build a ship for free. I can't repair a ship for free. Uh, well, you can get paid when hey, you get paid. Hey. Uh, Abraham like turns, like clasps you on the shoulder. We'll see about that. <laughs> I 
Uh, he, 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 like, he, he turns to Joby and kind of like gives a wry smile. No. Like clap, T like uh, like Pat, Pat's, Pat's, uh, Pat's, God, what's your character's name again? Uh, Kennedy. Kennedy, Kennedy Pat, Pat, Pat's Kennedy on the shoulder as like starts making his way out of the building. As they are out of the building, Trunk is just gonna look at everyone and just say, You're still going to bring me back the 100 I just paid. Trunk is, will be paid back that 100 credits and so much more when we get to the margin space. Don't you I've worry. been here since a long time. Anyway, there is no reason not to do the dude's mission, but there's also no reason to actually give him the money. We have. How many days before that ship is repaired? Long enough to concern us. That said, I'm not going to pass up a potential opportunity. The doctor has sniffed out some kind of abnormality on this planet. To protect of it, we want to know. Yeah, but the doctor would be more interested if we just get the money and your people at Emoja would be way more interested and you know have a lot more looser as I said wallets we can also give them a couple of Zerglin corpses they would be pretty interested considering that's something that doctor is interested in too Abraham nods and precisely why he must stay on his good side Truck is just gonna look at Kennedy and, and Joby and just say, Does anyone know where this mine actually is? Yes, yeah, A good half a day's walk out of town. They got a, uh, the, the miners have about a, uh, they have their own special little bar out there that the military pays for. And it's only for miners. The military. They're not it's like not the happening. nicest bunch. How how well armed are they? Uh, the miners are not armed at all, unless you want, unless you can count uh, maybe an SCV here or there, or, or maybe a pickaxe. Uh, the military boys over there, they sell the other than the sheriff, they sell the only guns around. They sell the military grade stuff on the sheriff and. His, and his little science buddy that he hides in the armory go and make all these guns and hide them in this thing called the Grim Vault. A real edgy name. Oh boy. But yeah, they go hide them in that. And they have they go and take up, have to go pay for them. Go and get guns from them. They're the only place we get guns either. You know, them army guys or uh, sheriff, the sheriff. The so-called sheriff. From what, I, from what uh, Kelly tells me. Interesting information, interesting information. That's not like a lot of money. I'd say it's probably about... Mm, on the later end of midday. Like, it probably is almost just about time for... Uh, uh, people to start heading, heading like away out of the mines, heading back into town. At this point. Yeah. Um, like, after you leave the... Doc Mastis place, you notice that there's a, more people on the streets than there were when you, when you uh, came in. I found the place was to rest for tonight. Yeah. Yeah. You can go to Old Dirt Row. They got, they're the only place that you can really run. Or you can stay in your, uh, your ship for the night. But you guys can hang out my, uh, you guys can hang out in my uh, shed. Uh, I got room there. Um, there's no got beds. I, I kind of just uh, find a place and sleep. Abraham nods gratefully. I will be taking you up on that offer. He like looks at Tripus. I would suggest we do the same. And you are yeah, broke. Really, what I, that makes it. No, that it's, makes, it's like you have to enter into a scrapyard to get to your place, since you and Stocko are on good, are on good terms. And this will yeah. sort of uh, like let let you other guys know. Um, this scrapyard is basically a, a giant plot of land. Um. It basically looks like a dump. Like it, it, it looks like a modern day dump, except instead of having piles of tr 
trash and you know, like assorted trash. It's pretty much all like just a metal and scrap and a wire. And it's just, like there's countless mounds you could probably get lost. Uh, like like you could spend like probably literal uh, months sorting through all this trash. And it's magnificent. It's lovely. Sort of at the head of it is a small like actually wooden cabin sort of area and then uh on the porch of this cabin there sits a man in a rocking chair smoking a cigar and having just like what looks like a very nice cold drink as he looks over his, his kingdom of trash and and curled up next to the seat is is some like a, a wee pile of something mechanical is kind of like curled up almost next to him uh, and you notice that in this whole, throughout this whole scrapyard are people scavenging. Uh, Trichus, because of your natural, like, mind-reading ability, um, like, it's trained a little bit, uh, but because, you know, you're, you're naturally psionic, you're, you're kind of almost can't help yourself from picking up, uh, the minds of, of the surrounding people. I should also note that the that does include uh your your three companions here um so for those three players if your character thinks something trichus kind of unless you you make an active effort to try and and, and shield your mind trichus will know you're thinking of something okay in that case my character's kind of having a little that's some of that little desperation in him right now because he's like fixing a ship gonna get this shit working gonna get off this planet right um yeah joby do you joby you want to get off the planet too right like like that's yeah. an overwhelming desire of yours then yeah i would say that like uh trichus yeah trichus definitely picks up that both of you are kind of like just desperate to get the fuck off this rock um, but Trichus, your, your, your sort of awareness spreads out over this whole, like, uh, all this scrap, and you basically feel, um, just this, this wave of desperation as you pick up, like, oh, oh, I just need a, a, a power core. I, you know, can't afford, you know, can't afford dock, uh, you know, can't afford the dock's prices to fix it up. I, I j I'm just gonna have to do it myself. If I, if I can find it here, I'll get out cheaper. Um... Of course, you can also pick up that they've been saying to that them that to themselves uh, for months now, uh, and you like it's, it's a similar story throughout this whole scrapyard. And then from the cabin is this guy just kind of sitting in his wheelchair, smoking a cigarette, having a drink, and the overwhelming like sort of thought you get from him is, "Heh, <laughs> suckers." Yeah. I mean, I'm also kind of internally laughing at the people searching, because I'm just like, God, y'all suck. Y'all can't, y'all can't just go out to some other place. It just since y'all walk around most of the time, anyways. Yeah, so I think now's the point where like Joby kind of makes the observation of like, oh, this is you live like this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I kind of look back and I was like, you don't. This is like perfect. And, uh, as, as you sort of enter into the yard, like a sensor or something must have picked you up because a bell, um, on the porch of this cabin starts ringing and Stocko and the, this man smoking a cigarette, having a drink, looks over and, he, and, uh, he starts to call out, yeah, just put them credits in the box right next to the... Oh, it's just you. How you doing, boss? What'd I tell you about bringing friends over? I ain't, I ain't, exactly. I ain't an inn. I ain't giving, I ain't giving a place to sleep to everybody. To, to whatever the bones you find off the street. Oh, these guys are a, a different. They got a ship. Oh, they got a ship now. Does it work? Kinda. As they, they pay, they're paying me to fix it. Well then, you're paying me to search through my junk. Put the credits in the bucket. Uh, you can just like drop ten in, cause, cause you aren't really, you know, it's pretty late in the day already, and he's probably pretty close to closing up, and he's just being kind of 
He's just being like kind of a dick to be like. Yeah, give me I'm breaking the rules a little. A little bit. So yeah, I just put the tank rents in the thing. So I don't because I'm already I'm not the most well shining character in this town. Bit of an asshole. Bit of a thief. Yeah. Joe, oh, do you want me to describe what? It Joe, well, Joby kind of makes this comment about how, like, you know, what, what was it you said that uh, if if, if, if live in this hellhole? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see, like I seriously live in this. Mm. Yo. Uh, just like rest of the buildings in town is literally just made out of scrap metal. <laughs> yeah. As these two big double doors, and you know, if I open it up, you see a bunch of makeshift tables and actual tables it looks like the inside of like a old like a dirty flip like a dirty pawn shop while you see all the random crap that no one will buy i think you mentioned earlier abraham and uh Trichus, you kind of notice the distinct lack of beds blankets and things that could be considered pillows but there's nothing else well Trichus is just gonna look at I'm just saying, you know, uh, sleeping in a, well, a dump is one thing, but sleeping in a dump without a bed is a, totally another thing. I think I'm going to go just buy myself a bed. Well, don't have a bed either. They just, got, they just give you a cot that's probably got rats and don't stay living Jesus. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> if, you, if you just take a couple blankets and lay them all out, they turn into a mattress. It's pretty good. As I'm saying that, I'm cl I take my hands and just push all the junk off this one table and start throwing blankets over it like I'm making a bed. Uh, the truck is just gonna look at it. I think I'm fine. I'm just going to go look for somewhere else to sleep. Hey man, it's Sukasa Mikasa. <laughs> I mean, I, I have beds in my, uh, in my old craft ship if you want. I got work in AC too. Okay, that sounds like something livable. I'm going there. <laughs> <laughs> An abandoned ship wins. Uh, uh, Abraham, Abraham doesn't act like we have to do that. He's just sort of lodged at Trikus. If you must, if you must, just be careful and keep an eye out for any unwanted guests. No, I still don't like that doctor. He might be trouble. Abraham nods again. Might, but he might also be a useful asset. I know everything is a useful asset for you. I'm telling you, he might be trouble. <laughs> Abraham just... <laughs> He just nods again. He just nods in agreement again. Right. Um, no, so yeah, what is, uh, I'll, I'll say like it's getting pretty late in the day. What is like you guys' um, MO as, as it's going down and you're kind of like, uh, you've, you've milled about the scrapyard, maybe you've had some conversations. Like what kind of like, like what kind of like uh, organization are you guys like doing? Like, uh, you have a downed ship. Like what, what, are, what plans are you making? What are you thinking? Oh, I was just gonna start going back home. Yeah. Alright, so Joe and Trichus, you're going with him? He heard that there is beds. <laughs> I'm working in a hey, But anyway, I'm getting ready, like, finding parts that I think that ship may need. Okay, um, then can you roll a science check? Or scavenging around the yard before, uh, just like to spend like the next couple hours just scavenging around the yard looking for parts. Um, hey, hey, 24, pretty good. Uh, okay, again, you get like a some good stuff. Um, and I'm going to damn. Yeah, there's a list of stuff you get from this. So, uh, since you guys have, like, as as residents, you have access, there is a uh, sort of um, chart. But uh, yeah, you get 
don't worry about it. Um, I'm gonna write Damn. what you get. Again, it's gonna take like I'm gonna have to actually like read the rules at what some of this stuff does. Uh, Letchel, what are you doing? Letchel is kind of making himself at home in a uh, Kennedy little shop there. It's set setting himself up like a corner where he's just kind of padding out and clearing out him him to uh, rest in when it when the when the time sort of comes. Are are you also wandering sort of the scrapyard just on your own? Hey man, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Well, well let's we'll spend just a little bit of time doing that, like casing the area out. Honestly, what it really looks like. Doing. Okay, well, um, as 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 sort of the you know the minutes pass uh, and people start filtering out of the yard with their piles of, of with their own personal piles of junk that they've retrieved from Stocko's yard. Eventually, like Stocko, like you see, he feel like you know he knows you're kind of with uh, Kennedy, so he's not really gonna push it. He's just gonna. Like, he eventually heads inside his own cabin, and as you're uh, walking around the the scrapyard, and Kennedy's kind of at this at this moment, Kennedy is, is kind of on like, the other side, and. Uh, you pass by a um, what looks to be a, a sort of uh, broken down uh, phone terminal. Yes. And and as and as you walk by it, it kind of uh, flickers on for a second, and it's. Is it oper yeah, is it operational? Um, yeah, so, uh... Okay, yeah, no, that's a good, that's a good, yeah, if it's not operational, I'm gonna go find one that is somewhere in town. Okay, yeah, so we can say that that reminds you, and, and it flickers on, and you maybe look at it, and, uh, when it kind of, under some more scrutiny, you maybe try tapping, uh, some of the, the, the buttons on it, like some of the screens on it and it kind of like sparks a little bit and fl flickers back off so yeah you start heading into town to find a terminal that it, a phone terminal that does work you do actually eventually come across the the dirt row flop house that uh joby kind of joked about how it's it, it is just a mess of cots that you'll probably get robbed at um but while it is a complete mess there is a um a phone terminal outside of it and while it looks like it's in barely better condition than the one in the junkyard it does work good yeah uh yeah so i'm going to commandeer that for the time being you know so i get like this uh i i, I think it's like probably it's probably like a teal colored flash drive looking thing i think it's the mm -hmm. right thing mostly colored white but it has like a, a sort of um aqua blue accents on it yeah, so that gets plugged in, and I kind of, I guess I kind of tinker with the, um, keypad on it a little bit, typing in, like, a series of numbers, 909-775-6294-2099. Yeah, 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 so the, the screen kind of flickers a little bit, and then it changes from the regular sort of phone screen. Read accessing an encrypted network. Figure then appears on the screen. And you hear a voice say, Status report, Agent Lechen. As it has been successfully taken out of Dominion custody. He suffered minor injuries, but they have been tended to and mended. He is in top condition, currently outside of my range of observation due to his own preferences but I do believe that doing so is more will earn him further trust between me and the protectorate as a whole he should be safe even without my watch even without my watch state your location Erst in Fort Masara unfortunately 
my my ship has been damaged and we have been grounded until repairs can be made or alternative transport can be found to get off the planet. Um, so the the sergeant is is of course it, it sort of matches like essentially what you would think a Yemojin like higher sci-fi agent would look like. Um, one of the notes I would say is that it looks a lot more human in in, in sort of parts of the face area. Uh, like over their eyes is kind of like a, a visor with like a. Um, it's like stark white and like uh like with the teal lights coming off of it and when you say that you're um, in located in Harriston Marsara um you hear like a pneumatic hissing and then like a push as like um a plug ejects itself and then you can like reorient and like plugs into a different like part of her head like into an entirely different port and a couple plugs again they go like eject like push and, and rearrange themselves like that um her head twitches one way or another, and uh, she then says, Backwater Colony Town, currently under Belmorian influences. She then like pauses for a second, you hear a couple mechanical beeps and whistles, and then uh, she continues and says, Agent Le Leche, the Eumogen Roy Ruling Council has been notified of your, of your mission. It has been moved to top priority. Processing new mission information. The infiltrator class vehicle, codenamed Triptark, has been tagged by Dominion Military and is currently being searched for throughout Dominion space. You're to acquire a new mode of transportation before departing uh, from uh, your current area. Due to the existing tensions between uh, the Dominion Military uh, in charge of Marsara and the Kalmorian uh, mining operations there, the Eumogen uh, Protector will be unable to provide assistance to you uh, in your current uh, area. You will need to uh, procure your own mode of transportation. Understood. At the questing mission divergence. I have been made aware of particular, perhaps of particularly interesting effects the local on the local mineral and, and fauna life on the, in the area due to protest activity in the past. Request opportunity to bring back samples of mineral and perhaps t uh, of, of minerals and living tissue for your motion study to determine if anything of interest can be found in the region related to Protoss energies. Request verified. Forwarding request. And then you hear a series of, of, of beeps and whistles and uh, the visor kind of, the lights sort of flicker in a couple places. Um, and then you hear just a sort of uh, like a ch -ch 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 and like a, another sort of like signal beep noise. Uh, request has been has been accepted. Uh, like, like, uh, not the, your request has been accepted, as long as it does not interfere with the main mission, and uh, you and the main assets. Uh, again, another like series of beeps. Uh, I guess it would just say like Trichus. And main asset, doo -doo -doo -doo. Trichus is is uh, returned to Emojin space within uh, a reasonable time. Understood. I on per it's a Understood. On subjective notes, I believe that these could be an opportunity to test Trichus's value to the protector in the field situation as well as determine if any other assets can be located in this area. I would like to require assistance from locals in getting off the planet. And in such a case, have ones that might provide future benefits to the Moja to be preferred. Um. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, like a sort of like darn like sort of blare occurs and um, the adjutant yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the adjutant then says reiterating mission objectives return tr return ghost c uh, return ghost trichus to Umojin to Umojin space any uh, anything accomplished uh, any any Th this is your pri this is your primary objective. Do not pursue any sec. Uh, it has been the 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 mission has been uh, given a high priority. Do not pursue any secondary assets at this time. Abraham kind of frowns at that, but not understood. Another series of, of beeps and sort of like, uh, whistles, and, and, and then the, the adjutant says, uh, "Agent Lechen, status report has been recorded." Uh, and then he, like lists off sort of like a series of like like numbers that mean basically nothing to you. Um, confirm like uh, confirm communication. Uh, confirm uh, communication. And Communication end confirmed. <laughs> and then uh, the uh, screen like goes black, and then it comes back on, and it looks like the regular um uh, phone terminal screen screen. Uh, yeah, he removes his little flash drive and kind of backs it away. He he he, does, he looks fairly. Perturbed, but yeah, he he looks fairly perturbed by the uh, kind of he ultimatum got, yeah, granted. He got shut down a little bit there. Yeah, yeah. You are an asset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is what happens when you're a, a, like a, a potentially a level eight psionic is. <laughs> you start getting referred to in terms such as asset and usefulness. Property. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think we'll we'll, uh, we'll fade out from from yeah. kind of kind of being uh, like sort of maybe. Like dejectedly, like pulling his little like uh, tra uh, calm scrambler out from the terminal, stuffing it back in his pocket, and heading back, I guess, to the scrapyard. Yeah. That'd be okay. After, I think. Um, and we'll, yeah. we'll we'll sort of come in to Trichus and Joby as they're kind of making their way out of town to the outskirts where uh, Joby's crashed uh, transport ship is at. Um, do y'all have anything, uh, like, 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 what kind of conversations do you think we'll talk about? Again, um, Joby, while you don't know that, like, Trachis can read your mind, because, of, like, like I said, you don't know for sure that he's a, a, a psionic, um... Oh, he's not even paying attention to, to what the doctor's doing at all. He was like, cool, that's a slice. Right, okay, yeah, so, like, <laughs> okay, never mind, so you're just, like, you're completely, like, what, what is, what actually, maybe this will be an interesting place to start, is, like, Joey, what are you thinking? Like as you're heading back to the ship, like what's going through your mind? Like are you uh, like like do you, are you thinking anything like particularly out of the way from from having this sort of crashed ship crash into the the starport of these uh, two uh, heroes coming to town? Or yeah, no, I'm go ahead. wondering who they are and uh, and uh, how they managed to get their ship ship crashed up so so much because that's, that's clearly not like. Um, that's clearly not just like, oh, he hit an asteroid. Yeah. You can see the bullet holes. <laughs> and it's because of his past of his ship getting shot down because the guerrilla fighters after after the war, he's like, I'm yeah. not sure about that. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I saw the bullet holes there, but right. this isn't just a normal 
about. Yeah, so basically, yeah, Joe was like doing this calculus, and so I was like, oh, okay, they, they clearly aren't being entirely truthful about something, and Trichus, as you're sort of walking with him, it's like, like, Joby's thinking in his head, and of course he's not like saying anything out loud, but you're kind of hearing the information of this, he's just casually talking to you about it. Is there anything you want to do with that, or are you worried? Uh, no, he, he's, he does not go into get back to that point already. He's just gonna make it like some small chat chat with it. Well, I, you said it's a transport chip. But how did you get a transport chip? Mm, crap. Me and my dad, my mom, did need three parts for that big old some bitch over there. We used to go to the frontier store. That's how we could afford something that big. Yeah. We sat there and we explored the, the farthest parts of this part of the galaxy. Uh, we got star maps everywhere. We even got cities on planets named after us. But, but while on one of our ways through here, after the war, after a uh, I think they called him uh what's his name rainer and they say he saved he saved humanity after uh, after all that happened we were doing trying to continue to to explore because it was safer a little further this way now and we were going through my star state these these uh gold yellow ships are shooting shooting us down they're shooting at us and shooting us they're trying to shoot us down so my father and my mother, they went and decided that it'd be best to try and ease us into a crash landing over here. But, as you can see for them, it didn't turn out all that well. I got left here on this planet with this old ship that we're walking to. Now I'm here trying to find a way to get this ship working and get, get off this planet. So, but so, so how did you meet uh, the... But, uh, not checklist. Legend. I don't remember that fellow's name. Yeah, that the legend fellow's name. Uh, you, you mean the the one that is letting me pay for my own medical because of him? Yeah, him. Uh, well, it's kind of a complicated. He's doing me a favor for another favor. You know, you know the type. Do you think he can pay for uh, getting his ship fixed? Or my, uh... I'm probably sure at this point he's like bankrupt or something like that. He probably doesn't have any money. Well, I, was gonna, I was gonna ask if uh, he thinks y'all can get that ship fixed. I can try it for him. I did a little bit of practice flying before this thing crashed. Uh, yeah, yeah. You yeah, seem quite eager to live the beautiful city of Harriston. This place is clearly suck. <laughs> this place ain't beautiful. That, that sheriff there, he's trying to run us into the damn ground. Uh, from what I understand, all the mayor, or the, excuse me, the mayor, and all his little crony deputies, they, they make more money than the miners do, and the miners are the ones that were rushing out there to get all that material. And they don't well, even do nothing. Well, we're heading to Emoja, so he's probably good for it if you want to be a pilot. I actually don't want him to drive any fucking ship. We almost crashed once. Rude. I can definitely show you my stuff if y'all get that plane running, or if y'all find somebody to get another plane. Yeah, um, I'm sure I'd love you to be the the father. You 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 look uh, quite skilled. But as I said, he is probably not going to be here till we arrive to Emoja and. See if his balls want to pay you. Hey. <laughs> Just well, I'm telling them we're going to a Emoja. Nice work. Emoja? 
Well, now, why would you all be going over there? I, I don't even think I've ever been to Nerdy Joe. I've been on the outskirts. I don't even know where that is. Uh, as I said, I need to do something for it. Supposedly, we need to do that in the motion. <laughs> Good save. Trinkus <laughs> has has had the briefest moment where he's like, oh, wait a minute, maybe I shouldn't <laughs> explain that. I like like the government's after I'm a... us. That's, maybe I shouldn't tell everyone I'm a I'm a fugitive asset. Hmm. <laughs> Did I mention I'm a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, whatever y'all's reasons are, as long as long as I get off this backwater planet and maybe get to go join some military branch, go get my own ship and get out there in the frontier again. Yeah. I mean, I'll help you. Out yeah, there. yeah, sure. As long as I get anyone. Away from the main space, I would be happy. Oh, that that should be easy. Those those guys are slow as hell. I ain't seen nobody fly slower than them. Even those K KMC. I want to say KFC. The KFC. KMC guys. Ah uh, yes, <laughs> the Kentucky Fried Combine. God. <laughs> Dude, even the KMC guys. When I see them landing their ships, they land. They fly faster than the mini. Uh, as you as you're making this comment, um, you guys do notice. I, um, depending on where you want to place yourself as you're walking back to your your drop ship, eventually, at some point, maybe it was as, probably as you were leaving town, and just first getting out of the gates is when, uh, like Joby, you you're used to this site, but Trichus, this is uh, you see on sort of um. It's not like on the horizon, but it is like a pretty um. Like it's distant, but it's it's very large, so it's very easy to see, and it's a giant sort of um, uh, I don't know, like it's monolithic funny. structure with the Kelmorian Combine logo, kind of just in in large, like fucking lit up letters, um, essentially, yeah, just in like large, like teal lighted up, um. I think the Kelmorian colors are teal. Uh, it's a lot of teal in this universe. Hold up, I'll look this up for you. I think you're right, but let me look it the up problem, for you. The problem oh. is, StarCraft 2 kind of made it a Yemojin thing, but... So, so Matt is Viper driving it up over there. Got it. Yeah, Matt, Matt he's our official color lore master, but... um. I love colors! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um... There's just giant monolithic structure. Like, have, um. Like, uh, you know how, like, there's always, like, in a cyberpunk dystopia, there's always, like, the giant corporate building that had that, like, it's like, we need to spend a million dollars making our logo as big as possible so that people everywhere can see it. That's essentially what the Kelmarians have done with this. Or building your building to look like the logo. Like a, a wall perimeter that you can see, like sort of the lights. Uh, as the the you know, sunlight's going down, you can see pretty clearly that there are uh, like Kelmore, like like uh, people in like uh, the marine suits, the CMC suits, like patrolling along the top of this barricade and like watching basically all angles out. Um. Just try to say, Jesus, this is. Could they have been made it any bigger and any shit? Uh, probably. But I don't know. I hear that there are other wards and hot I've never, I've never seen them or talked to them, but I've, talk, I've heard them, heard about his, uh, his, uh, not munitions officer, quartermaster. I've talked to his quartermaster to see what kind of weapons and engine parts I can put that from him. Talk to him, and he says that he's some big old hotshot, and always trying to go and make money for the corporation and make himself big. He says he, I don't know. He, he's weird. Yeah, well, government people anyway. Yeah, but I wouldn't recommend going over there unless you got something you're really trying to do because those soldiers will shoot. Yeah. 
No, I, I, I have no intention of actually with the convoy. Yeah, they almost found it, these animals, it's kind of funny. And oh, yeah, um, yeah, you, you, you also, um, everyone gets, you know, an equivalently good rest, sort of. Obviously, Trichus and Joby sleep much better in real beds, and uh, even if the the walls and ceilings have a, a, a dangerous chance to fall down, um, hey, that only happened once. <laughs> Yeah, and then um, uh, Joby and uh, Joby and uh, yeah, try to sleep well, and then Lechen and Kennedy sleep in the the junkyard. You get wait, no, you sleep in the junkyard. It's fine. Um, it'll do. Yeah, and then and that's sort of your first day in the town of Harristown. Um, the Dominion is certainly still a ways off due to some very good maneuvering by Lechel. And Trichus's wounds are going to be pretty much healed up after a good night's sleep. Um, the only uh, remaining detail for this session is um, I would like to take you all to zoom out from Harriston for a little bit because Marsara is a pretty big planet. Um, like the, the you know colonies are are uh, around, but um somewhere. Sort of in the wastes. It's it's hard to call it a waste, but again, Harriston itself is surrounded by deserts and 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 and, and pr pretty deep. If you if you go, maybe about, uh, let's say a, a around like eighty miles out from Harriston, like a, a like a a distance that you definitely would need to to drive to. You couldn't walk it in a day. Um, there's just a crater, a, a, a very crater that um, just kind of showed up um, in between colonizations, you know, as they do when a planet gets invaded, purified, and just all, all in all blown to hell. But then there's a, a, a bit of a, a crack in this crater as, um, as something stops working so well. All of a sudden, there just appears a, a floating piece of metal as it, as it crackles and shimmers and, and comes into 